I'm going to work on this lead code problems. I think I'm going to do four and half an hour for each. If I can solve in half an hour, I'm going to look at the solution. So let me start first one. Given an integer, I already started this one as maybe two weeks ago or very long time ago, but I don't remember really well what it's time to do. Given an integer array, nums return all the triplets such that i different than j, i different than k, and j different than k, and nums i plus nums j plus nums k equals zero. Notice that the solution set must not contain duplicate triplets. Yeah, so I think I remember what I was trying to do here. I was trying to get choose either of those combinations to get combinations of all uh, the three of a list of three of from all the numbers on the num list. And I was putting that, so I was pretty much creating a nested list using this one. And then what wasn't working is that I had repeated combinations. I got the right thing, I think. The right, yeah. So the only difference between mine and the answer is that I, I have duplicate things here. So I think what I was trying to do is check to see if there is a list equal to the other list, but I couldn't find a way to do it. Because if you check for equality by doing a simple loop, it's just going to be the list. To check if a list is equal to a list, I think, and it's not going to check all the elements of the list. So maybe I have to do a nested for loop. But then it seems like the solution is not that efficient. I don't understand this restriction here. Uh, so it's pretty much saying that it can't say it can't be the same number as some of the three numbers. Or two equal numbers, they all have to be unique, I think. That's what it means. So, how can I do this? I'm returning result here, sorting the numbers, then doing those combinations on the sorted list. Then I loop through this list and I check if the sum is equal to zero. Now this was the thing that I was trying to add here, but this doesn't add any relevant information. And I still got the same thing, I think, yeah. Life. So this is just to check if the list is bigger than three. Or if there are any results. I need to understand more data structures. I don't understand really well. The last problem I was trying to solve on Cold Wars that I couldn't solve, I went on Twitch, there's a, this guy called Kiki Impact. And then I asked him to, for him to see, for, to solve it, to see how he, he would solve it. And he used this thing called HeapQ which is a data structure in Python. And I didn't really understand the solution that well. He said it is a min heap, but I did, didn't understand really well how it works. I guess it's just uh, block storages for 
memory, memory, the heap. But the way he used that to create, I think it creates a tree structure format. But I'm not used to thinking about it, uh, about problems this way, and about, and I'm not not used to thinking about using the algorithms to solve them, like binary search and things like that. And it seems like they use this stuff a lot when they're solving these problems. So I think I need to figure out a way to incorporate them more into my solutions. But I'm not sure as well. I probably will have to spend some time on Elite Code itself to learn how to associate problems with the data structures that are better to use on each one. I know they, that you can separate based on can separate problems based on the data structure, so I might do that eventually. And I think this is going to be helpful in my case. I think there is no way besides doing a nested for loop. The issue is I have to check for, I think it gets too big, it can't be that way, because it gets too big, and the solution. Because I have to perform the check for every single list in the, the thing. Let's see if I can incorporate that heap queue here. For each every parent node has a value less than or equal to any of its children. This implementation is this array for a rich heap queue. That's our Equal to heap this and heap this. Counting elements from zero. For the sake of comparison, no existing elements are considered should be infinite. Right, heap is that its smallest element smallest element is always the root. I think I have to think more about it before I I don't feel like I'm gonna be able to solve this in, in half an hour. But I'm gonna think about it. Uh, let's just see if I can think about a uh, roadmap to solve it. So I think it, the, the reason why I thought about using combinations there is because it seems like I'm gonna need some type of variation of that because at some point you have to compare all the elements in the list. If, or maybe I'm looking at this the wrong way. 
Because what they're saying is each element of the list has should be unique. And then the sum of these three elements. So it means that it's probably better to check for the sum in the list for each three. Yeah, but I still need to check for all the variations. That's the problem. Because if I check for one, I may remove these items after I figure out that the sum of them is three. Then I won't be able to combine any two of these or any of the elements that exist on that tree sum into another tree sum. And that's a problem, I think. Or maybe they're saying you can't have different elements. Oh no, here is minus one, and then here is uses minus one as well. Oh, but this one is equal to this one as well. So this is not saying the elements have to be different. I'm just saying that their indexing should be different. So how can I check for all possible combinations of some or three numbers inside of a list? That's why it feels like I should be using something like this. Because I need to test all possible combinations. Or maybe maybe I can just use... Yeah, but combinations just gives me the list. That's why I did things like this now. Now I remember, yeah, because this gives me all combinations of three numbers inside the list, and then I loop through this and get uh, the ones that the sum is equal to zero. That was the logic that I was thinking about. But why I'm not removing? Why there is two combinations there? Well, I guess because the indexes are are different here, but the number is the same. That's why. And that's why they have this condition here. Hmm. So what if I created a dictionary out of the list first and then I index the dictionary with a unique key for each one and I view these numbers as different and then I use combinations. I don't think you can use it on a dictionary.
I was also thinking about using this Ether Tools product here. But I remember I couldn't figure out a way to incorporate this. That made sense. Because in order to use this, you need to use the, you need to have a, an asset list, I think. Maybe I can do it to this product on the final nested list here. What does set of results give me? I can turn a list interessant. A nested list interessant. What if I append to a set? So for For item in results, let's create a set here. New set. Uh, set that adds item. Let's see if this works. Maybe this is update. Yeah, I can't add this at uh, least to a set. <laughs> now, if this worked, then it would be the solution problem. Maybe I can loop through the list and I can get, I think it's always going to be multiple of three, the nums list. So I can get a combination, I can loop through the list and create a nested list with three elements of each and then use it to this product to find some. I think I'm going to try that, it seems better. So let me think how I'm going to do this. I maybe don't need this sorted here, but I think I'm going to comment this out. Actually, has should be no. No. Or maybe actually not because I can use range.
Any seconds to do this. But it, the problem is if I do it like this, it's not gonna let me. So I might have to do a normal for loop. And the problem with creating tuples is that, or maybe, yeah, I can use either tools products later. So what's going on here? Don't understand. Okay, so now I have the the list with the three of each. Now I can think about a way to use either tools product to find the sum. Maybe I can just do I think I'm gonna erase this. Right item in results print item. Because turtles products. I think I have to do the star thing. But then I don't remember uh, how to apply the sum here. Iterables and then repeat. Or maybe I can just do, maybe I'm overcomplicating this. I can just loop through the nested list and then run the sum. But there's probably a lot better solutions out there. Or I can just filter through SB. I always have trouble implementing filter in Python. Because I never know how to put the function there. I 
it's probably gonna give me an error, I think. I'm gonna have to think about how to change this, yeah. Oh, actually, SB is an asset list, I think, as well. Oh, but it, it makes sense because I'm applying the sum on the list. Maybe it's better if I do this at the end. Maybe like this works. Maybe the other way around. Oh, so you can use either tools combinations. I had the right idea there. I had to use the filter and then that's oh I can just put some some of value here. Okay. Yeah, but I'm still getting the the wrong thing here. So what if I do as a recall? Why am I not getting this one? Oh, it's because I'm not getting the... The problem is I'm not getting the combinations that are in between the three different numbers. I'm just uh, dividing them exactly by three. That's the problem. So that's why combinations is better than doing this thing here. But now I pretty much looked at the answer here. Maybe I can try to implement without looking. I think it's the nums and tree and see if this breaks the thing. Combinations. And I think what the, res the thing there was doing is 
wrapping this in a list and then doing filter. And then on here is doing on the X from X equals zero. But I'm not sure if that's gonna give the answer as well. It's gonna be the first thing that it prints here. Yeah, it, it just gives the output that I was getting before. I'll bring it back and then I'll probably look at the solutions here on the The time is up, so I have to look at the solution. From the videos I saw from people, they recommend doing each, uh, spending 30 minutes for each challenge and nothing, nothing more, and then looking at the solution, and then eventually coming back to the same problems and seeing if we can solve it, and then doing this over and over again. And it's just a more, more efficient way of learning. So I think I'm going to go with that. But my natural inclination is uh, obviously to <laughs> keep trying until I finish, uh, regardless of how long it takes. Easy to understand the solution step by step. Oh, I have to filter through for Python solutions. I think I'm only going to be using Python, maybe JavaScript as well for these things here. Since uh, it's probably the two languages that I'm going to use for interviews. And I'm not really good with C++. So I think it's better to, despite my inclination of trying to learn everything, I think it's better to focus on one thing and try to become the best at it. And I think for me, focusing on Python is probably the best choice because of machine learning and the backend stuff. So that's what I'm going to focus on more, I think. Python and then maybe Web3 stuff with Solidity. Simple solutions, problem statements, solution. Let, let us try to understand the problem statement. The first part of the problem statement is clear. We have to find out all the triplets in the given array whose sum is equal to zero. At least nothing but a set of three, blah, blah, blah. It means that we are not allowed to reuse any numbers from the array within a triplet. Example for the given array nums are not considered valid triplets. Last condition that we need to consider is that we cannot have duplicate triplets in our final result. Use three loops to... Yeah, the brute force solution, I think, uh, I thought about it, which is just to do a bunch of nested uh, for loops, but I don't like going for the brute force solution. Because it's obviously worse. Because it, the brute force, I think, is just comparing each element of uh, each nested list 
that you create. Or doing the three loops in the main list and then doing the calculations that you need or the conditions that you need. If this is too long, I think I'm just going to look at the solution from someone in Python here. Yeah, so this is the brute force, nested loops, then puts the condition if it's equal to zero. Then it starts them. Oh, so you can lose if all not in results. Like I was trying to do as well. Using the combination stuff. So I don't understand why the way that I did it, it, it didn't work. Result list, now the sort, for indexing range, and the zero, announce, close now, continue. So checking to see if the number is there equal. Creates a left and right pointer, one from the end of the string, end of the list, and from the beginning. Or left. So while they haven't met, sum the number in the current index with the number in the left and the number in the right. Mm, interesting. So it's getting the first number and the one number after that, and it's summing with the number at the end of the list. If the sum is greater than zero, it decreases. So it sorts the first. I've seen this uh, implementation or similar to these implementations in some other problem. So this is probably a data structure or some algorithm that is well known to solve these types of problems. So if the sum is greater than zero, write minus one. It decreases the value in the right. And if the sum is less than zero, increases the sizes the size in the left. I don't really understand this portion really well. So let me think. So because the list list started, I think is uh, to check the boundaries. So if the sum of them is greater than zero, what does that mean? Oh, that means that if you go from left to right, it has a lower chance of the of you finding a sum that is equal to zero because the array is sorted. I think I get it now. And if the sum is less than zero, then you increase the left because you are below the boundary that you want. Else, then you append because the sum is zero. And you increase the left. And then you loop increasing the left because the boundaries but maybe can't you do this the same with right why choose left here i don't really understand this part here really well
Let's check and see if the number in the left is equal to the index. And if it's lower than the right. That is equal to zero. I guess it has to be the left because if you do the right, you're gonna get greater than zero because the numbers are higher than the points that you are. And these checks to see if there are additional or maybe I, I think I know a cool thing that I can do in the Python tutor. You can put this on the Python tutor visualization. And I can see how it works. The only issue is that I don't know how to put the input here. I could just pass three some and then some of the tasks. I think I got uh, everything from the solution. And I have to raise the self here. Okay. So you can't do type notation here. So let's see. So first it starts the list, checks to see if they are different, then it creates the boundaries, one and five, minus three, is the sum, increases the left. What? Returns an empty list. So does this even work? The first part makes sense to me, but the last one I didn't understand really well. Yeah, I don't get it. What if I put it here? Well, I think it was this one. I think it should be correct. So it's probably something that I'm doing wrong on the Python tutor. Yeah. 
yeah, it is accepted. So it's weird that it's not working on the tutor. Oh, it's probably because of this thing here. This portion. Yeah, so I can remove this. This is just saying that it's going to be a less a list with integers. Now I think it should work. Still doesn't. Maybe it's because it's only going once. No, I should be going through all the numbers. Uh, whatever, I'm not going to spend too much, too much time on this. I have to do uh, another one. Otherwise, I'm just going to spend hours on a single problem. So let me start start the timer for the next one. Given an integer array nums of length n and integer target, find three integers in nums such that the sum is closest to target. So I have an array of integers nums of length n. And an integer target. So it's pretty similar to the, the last one. Three integers in nums such that the sum is closest to the tar to target. Return the sum of the three integers. Input would have exactly one solution. So if yeah. So it's pretty much the same logic as as the last one. Oh, can I implement the last one? No. So nums are sorts. Then the results. I wonder if I can do the thing that he did there as well. Gonna be a list of lists. Int. And then there's the left and the right. Oh, actually, I think it's inside here. Left, right equals index minus one and length nums minus one. And then I compare. Yeah, the thing, the difference is in this one, it needs to get the closest approximation. I'm trying to think if it's possible to use binary search here somehow. And now I don't really remember the next parts. I know I have to do a condition if it's greater or bigger or lower and then Oh, yes. yeah, but in this case I don't need to check if they are all different. So 
to remember something like this. Uh, say S. Targets. Then left plus one. No right minus one. Then else, and this part I didn't understand really well. Then it was something, well, while or maybe I'm, I have to use nums as well. As nums plus equal to nums last plus one and Last plus equals one or something like this. And here the same thing. Oh well, here is right because I'm changing the index. And I think I think it was something like this. But I don't remember really well. I'm not going to need the results list uh, also. Because it's just going to return one number and not. Or maybe I can use the. Yeah, because I don't. What if the number is not equal, but it's close? How can I check for that? And I don't remember if this is also, I think it has to be inside the loop, but it's kind of weird that if that's the case. Yeah, there's something that I'm doing wrong here because this is just going to reinitialize each time, which might lead to an infinite loop. So maybe I should look and try to, uh, to look at the solution of the other one and try to modify it to this one. Did it put the timer? Yeah. And you can't initialize them outside of the, the loop because the I think it has to be inside, but I'm gonna have to look at this one. Don't remember very really well. Yeah, so it first checks, so it is inside the loop. So this part you remembered. Yeah, index plus one, or it's plus one, actually. Leave. But I remembered it was just a typo. Oh, and this is a while loop here. So while left. Yeah, that's the part I was forgetting.
and then returns the result inside of the the loop. I so almost remembered everything. And then if it's greater than zero, then minus one. This part are also where did I? I also confuse here. No. I was the other way around. And then here, and this is inside of the loop, I think. I'm definitely not going to remember this a uh, couple of days from now on, but eventually I'm going to get it. So in my case, I just need to return the number, and here is left minus one. I don't need to do this because it's obvious that it is a left plus one. So I don't think I need to do this part here. I need to do this part on the, the other ones. Probably. Is the difference, biggest difference is that I'm not trying to get the exact result, I'm just trying to get the closest approximation. So the question is how, how can I check for the boundary? We can check for the distance between right and left, and they can return that. And maybe at the end they can return right minus left. No, it's cracked. It's just this part that I don't understand really well what it means. Well, I'm doing this twice here. And also I got this confused. Yeah. Probably not gonna pass, but see what happens. Oh, it's because this part is irrelevant, actually. This while up here. That's the difference. 
it should just return the number yeah, because it, when it hits this it's never gonna run this I guess it does this on the other challenge because when it hits the target, which is zero, it fix it fix one of the pointers and then checks the other combinations. Yeah, because it means that if you get any other pointer, uh, it doesn't matter on the other direction. It's, it's like the same thing. So maybe yeah, it probably doesn't doesn't really matter which side you choose. It's just fixating one of the pointers and continuing the iterations from there. So in this case it's not relevant, I think. And maybe if I return here, that's the problem. Let's see if I do this. Another approach I can do is the the combination stuff or the products. But I think the logic here is you do the sum of because that's the other thing I'm summing them in a specific way. I think yeah, maybe another approach is better. If I get the sum of all First I get all possible three combinations from the list. I do either two combinations. Then I get the sum of all of them and put it on, in a list. And then I do the comparison. Just see which one is closest. I can measure the distance between the number by doing the gradient, like uh, doing the number minus the the only the only question then is uh, the difference between negative and positive numbers. But if I maybe should get the absolute difference, I think that's probably an easier easier solution than this one. But I want to understand this one. I think I, I do understand it, but not well enough. I think. But let me try to just implement the the thing that I'm thinking about. It should be it should be. Let's say, or let's use rats. Yeah, but oh, actually, I can just do some max. I can do list here. Prints as be. Okay, I have this far list now. Oh, actually, that's weird.
I guess this filter here is not working. Maybe if I return some axe. Oh, because I'm not filtering anything. Uh, it's a map, not a filter. I'm confusing the two different problems. Yeah, now it's uh, more reasonable. Then I can look through this SB and find the closest distance. So now how do I check for the difference for the closest one? I need to have a variable called difference. That should be the smallest. The only tricky part is the negative numbers. Or so I can do the conditions here. It's probably easier, but there's probably a better way to do it. If item and Maybe it's better to put this in parentheses here. I don't think it makes any difference, but just to be safe. So what I'm saying here is if item is negative and the uh, uh, target minus item is lower than the current difference, make item equal to difference. Oh, actually, I need to put target plus item here. And then I need to make another variable called results equals zero, results equals item. Because I need to store both the difference and uh, I need to update the difference and store which results gave that difference. If item is zero, then it's going to return the target because... Oh, actually... Maybe not. I'll think about it. I, I guess I can just put equal here. Let's see if this works.
We're about to call him here. So it must be on this part, I think. Or maybe this condition doesn't make sense. SB, SB should be all the possible combinations of the sum of the digits inside the list. So I'm comparing each sum with the target. Targets equal to the sum, then I return the, the item because it is equal. Return the sum of the three digit integers. Yeah, but I am returning the item, actually. So it's probably here the mistake. Because true. Oh, well, actually, minus one and true. Or well, minus one actually is further apart than true from one. So I'm making a mistake here. So if item is less than zero and target plus item, maybe. Uh, maybe it has to be like this. Uh, but then I'm saying that the difference is greater. Well, let me just try to see. Because so I don't have to think about it. Just try it. Zero. Also, it's not passing any condition. Also, oh, maybe if I start with a really big number. And still minus four. So if item is less than zero, which means it's negative. Target plus item should be minus three. So, yeah, it's lower, so difference becomes minus three. And I have a feeling that I'm overcomplicating this because there must be at this part, this final part, there must be a, new, a very. Uh, oh, maybe I can use the heap queue. Let's think. Because the first element of the heap is going to be the lowest one. Mutation reprogram. Uh, 
Uh, but I don't think it makes a lot of sense, actually. Because I'm not really trying to fire, find the lowest, so I'm trying to find the, the one that is closest to the target. There's probably a way to use this to find a more efficient uh, loop. And let me continue thinking about this one because I think this logic is cracked. Then I will see the other ones. Just think about what I can do differently. So if item is a negative number, target plus item. If it's equal, I think I'm going to spend a little bit more time on this because it's probably the last one that I'm going to do, should I? Item greater than zero or equal to zero. I'm going to get the target. Also, the problem is that I'm getting the greatest distance. So it should be the other way around, I think. If difference is bigger, I should be like this, probably. That's what I'm confusing here. And this should be a really small number. And now the problem is probably the negative thing that is confusing here. Because I need to check for the distance, uh, regardless of the the sign of the the number. Uh, so maybe it's always uh, like this. Doesn't really matter. Let's so say we have minus C, minus five and minus three. It's gonna become true. Yeah, maybe it's like this always. And now it's minus four. It's easier to just search. Obviously, between positive numbers is one minus the other. I just wanna, I don't wanna spend time thinking about. Well, I can do the Pythagoras stuff.
I'm still probably gonna get minus one there. Uh, this is the distance between points. Math this. And then I have to make it. Or maybe that's what's wrong with the other one. What was wrong with the other one? So this is for the lists. Uh. It's gonna give me zero again. I think I'm just gonna look at the solution if this doesn't work. I don't wanna think about how to make it work with negative numbers. And but I think the logic uh, is probably correct. You get the sum, the list with the sum of all possible combinations in this list, and then you check to see uh, the distance between each one of them and the target. And the distance that is smaller, it you return, you check to see when the distance is the smallest one, and you return the number for when the, the distance is the smallest. Maybe I don't need to update uh, the distance as well here, the difference. No, but then, yeah, I have to because I'm comparing the distance with which one.
and spend a little bit more time and then I'm gonna look at the solution. Because it, it doesn't make sense to me that this is not working. So I ha here I have one. Minus four is gonna hit here. So here's uh, should be plus. Oh no, it's negative actually. And here is plus. Because I'm trying to get the difference. The distance. If it's positive. Oh, actually, it doesn't make sense because. Yeah, that's the problem is. When it's positive is obviously going to be true minus one, which is one. But then I'm making equal to true three here. And if I do the, if I do minus, then it becomes a negative number. Maybe you can do absolute difference. Our item minus target. And the issue is I don't want to check to see if the number is greater or smaller than the target because then it becomes true many if conditions. Oh, I can just implement binary search, I think, on this one. Yeah, it probably works with binary search. But then, binary search is for the exact number, that's the thing. I'm just gonna look at the solutions. But I think that logic makes sense. It's just figuring out the which way to get the distance between the target and the sums, all possible sums. So he created the, probably did it the same way, yeah. Sorted, and then float minus infinite. Minus infinite. Or I range this start I because so it's the same technique from the other problem, which is left and right. Where's the, the three sums and then does the thing. Sum equals target, return target, absolute target minus sum. Because the list is sorted. It updates the difference. And difference equals absolute target. So it's pretty much the same logic that I was using. But because he sorted, he could find... And this is, was the thing that was confusing me with the negative numbers and positive numbers. But it's target minus sum. Yeah, I wasn't using the target. That's the, I think that was the problem. I was using the item and the, the sum, I think. No. Yeah, I don't remember really well. Let me see. Oh, no, I was using the target. Yeah, 
So I think I'm going to copy the solution uh, he did here. And I'm going to try to incorporate on mine this part here. And this can be float minus infin infinity. So it's target minus sum. Uh, sorted as be. So I don't need to put these statements as well, probably. Oh, I have to erase this. Floats. Still doesn't work. Yeah, but whatever. I think I'm gonna stop here and at least I got the logic. Uh, it's probably it's just details there, but yeah, I understand how to to get it done. I think when I stop here, I might come back uh, today or probably some other time. I think I might do this speedrun challenge, which is a bunch of a series of challenges on smart contracts, building stuff, and the reason why I'm thinking about doing this is because along the line they have a challenge that you're supposed to build a decentralized exchange or something like that, something along those lines. So I think doing these speedrun challenges might be, might be helpful on the other project that I'm doing to, and also understanding more the smart contracts behind decentralized exchanges. And this is the reason why I'm, I think I might do this. And I'm also gonna probably read this article here as well. which explains the the way that the smart contracts work, the code. And yeah, I think I'm going to do that and these challenges while I read machine learning books. And once I finish reading the, the books, I'm going to start, I'm going to go back to doing the Skyro competitions here. So yeah, see you then.